the Leeches 45-45 league, a really awesome league, I recommend it uh, to everyone, it really helped improve my classical game, I saw my uh, classical uh, results in increasing definitely, uh, getting better, and um, yeah, I definitely recommend it, and uh, Colman was actually a former teammate of mine, two seasons ago we were on the, the Da Vichy code team, <laughs> which was a very funny g name, uh, we chose and um, Transu asked me to analyze this game and uh, well at first he didn't ask me specifically he posted a message in the general uh, slack and uh, I decided that it would be a good idea to analyze the, the, his, his games and uh, yeah if you have uh, any games you want analyzed uh, definitely send me a message it might take a while but uh, it'll be there eventually Okay, so without further ado, let's start with the game. So d4, d5, queen spawn, and c4. We have the queen's gambit. Now, Transu chooses to go for d takes c4. Now, this sets the tone, the queen's gambit accepted. So, this sets the tone for this game. With d takes c4, you're losing, as black, your grip, grip on the center. White now has two central pawns. But at the same time, you distract white with this pawn, so he has to spend time to recover this pawn, and in that way, you can uh, gain time for peace development or even an outright attack, but that won't happen often. So, e3 is played here. After e3, we can see here there are options like knight f6, e5. Um, both of these options allow the bishop to be free, the light squared bishop. The move chosen in the game, e6, hems in the dark squared bishop. It's not wrong, of course, but um, it's not uh, as common as the other two moves, and for, for the reasons I just mentioned. Um, now, e3, why is this move played and not e4? e4 kind of hems in this queen from using f3. Now, why is f3 important? We, we can see by this line, b5. So, after b5... You protect the the pawn, and you kind of say to white, "Hey, I have an extra pawn. What are you going to do about it?" But uh, after a4, and now of course a6 is met by, oops, that was uh, silly of me. So a6 is met by a takes b5 and a takes b5, and you just lose a rook. So you can't take back. You just lost the pawn, and th this guy is falling as well. So uh, c6 should be tried. So that after takes, you can take. But now we see the point of e3, queen f3. And now you're attacking this uh, rook on uh, a8. And there's no way to defend it. You can't do anything to save this rook. So that's why if e4, the queen f3 is no longer available. So that's why e3 is usually played. And d6 again, um, it's fine theoretically, but okay. So b takes e4. Knight f6, bishop takes c4, I mean, and knight f6. These are standard development moves, and knight f3, c5. Okay, c5 is very important, because in queen spawn openings, you want the c pawn to be attacking the center, and the knight behind supports it, so you have two attackers on the center. If you go for uh, knight c6 immediately, you just have one guy attacking the center. And uh, this knight that's attacking the center isn't really even attacking the center, because... It can't, uh, it won't ever take the pawn because the the other pawn can just recapture. But on the on the other hand, when you have the c pawn there and the knight is there, you have two attackers. So it's like zero versus two in a sense. So that's why c5 is very important in these uh, queen's gambit positions. And uh, knight c3. And uh, here, uh, sorry, I kind of messed up the study here. Why didn't resign? Why it resigned much later at the end there? But uh, I messed it up and. Uh, uh, I, d I didn't see the real need to fix it. Anyway, so knight c3 is tried, and uh, knight c3, of course, is standard development move. Um, a6 here was played, and uh, a6 once uh, is uh, aiming for b5, and after b5 you have bishop b7, because, again, what's the problem here for both sides? These two bishops... They have both played, what have they played, e6 and, uh, and uh, e3. So, uh, 
So uh, th that means that these bishops are very bad. So the way to develop here is, of course, like this. There is the possibility of developing here, but um, it's kind of a moot point for black. So let me explain why. So my idea in this position is that white should develop like this and black should develop like this. Okay, let me tell you why. So let's consider, and we can see actually the game continuation. The, my, pro my point is proven further. So uh, if uh, white were to go with b3, black would be able to make use of the c file to aggressively annoy white. So let's say you play b3. I take here, and then I have the open c file. And on the open c file, I'm attacking this and I'm attacking this. And remember, the knight on c3 would be undefended after we play uh, c uh, b3. So um, that's why b3 is very weakening move for white. So white should pl play bishop d2 and then develop the bishop uh, maybe to c3, maybe to b4 later after the pawn is captured, maybe even to a5. Black, on the other hand, if he were to develop here, he'd be met with knight d5. And that isn't much of a problem in itself, because the knight wouldn't want to capture the bishop, even though you do win the bishop pair, but that's a very strong knight. So you wouldn't want to trade it for the bad bishop on d7. But uh, what's the future of the bishop on d7? If it goes to c6, then uh, white can consider capturing very much, because... If the knight isn't there to take back, and the knight has to move eventually, it has to go to d7. So if black plays this, and white has the knight here, after the knight moves to d7, you can just take the bishop. So that's a problem. So, um, so yeah, that's why. And also note that here, the bishop has a very open diagonal, so it has a very good uh, target. So... Um, yeah, that's why, uh, that's why I think this developmental scheme should be followed by white and uh, the other should be followed by black. Okay, so a4 is played, preventing b5, nothing wrong with that, knight c6, uh, developing, castles, and bishop e7. And now we reach this position. This position has been reached many times, and there are some nuance, nuances that uh, I want to point out. Well, um, first of all, Potentially, black could be better in this position because of the open c file. So, white sort of has to act now. Queen e2 actually has been tried. Queen e2 has been played. Um, you can see here, queen e2 has been played. But, um, it, uh, it kind of uh, doesn't... Uh, doesn't really push for an edge. So the best move here is actually d takes c5. And this move really makes black lose time. The only problem black has is that he isn't castled. If he were castled, d takes c5 wouldn't be a problem. But after d takes c5, let's say you take back immediately, there's queen takes d8, and now knight takes d8, loses time with the knight. So the best move after knight takes d8 is knight back to c6. So you've basically just wasted the tempo as uh, black. And if you take with the king, yeah, the king maybe isn't so unsafe there, but uh, you, you can't castle and you have to waste the move again to get your rooks connected, so it's also not so great. And after d takes c5, so bishop takes c5 isn't played for these reasons. So after d takes c5, queen takes d1 is played. After rook takes d1, bishop takes c5, bishop d2. Now... Uh, uh, note bishop d2, not b3, because again, b3 would weaken the queen side, and uh, we don't have the luxury of time for that. Not only do we not have the luxury of time for that, but um, actually, white's advantage in this position is first the open d5, and also, of course, the lead in development, because black has to waste it, uh, a tempo on castling, or king e7. But uh, probably castling is better, because this is closer to a queenless middle game than an end game, as we spoke about in one of my previous videos. But, um, yeah, so the idea is that bishop d2 should be played, because, again, b3 uh, shouldn't be played because of the reasons I mentioned. And then this position, white stands slightly better. We can see here a game by Kramnik, Anand versus Kramnik, and we'll see later another one by uh, 
an odd uh, Kramnik versus Topalov. Um, I won't com comment too much on these games. Not much went on anyway, it's just uh, just uh, very accurate end game play by both sides. And uh, here the position was agreed drawn. Here f5 maybe is a bad move, probably something like king f8 or something. Black should push for the win. b6 here was tried. So here after rook takes d1, after queen takes d1, rook takes d1, bishop takes c5, bishop d2. b6 was tried. Bishop d3. And uh, this position, white, uh, black made use of this square. And uh, white tried to attack these weaknesses. So white made use of the open c file actually. And uh, even though uh, black has the bishop pair, this pawn structure on the queen side means that uh, black stands slightly worse. And here it's just a draw. This bishop may be bad, but it's but bad bishops uh, protect good pawns, right? And uh, returning back to this position, bishop e7, one might actually consider castling. Uh, sorry, after d takes c5, so bishop e7, d takes c5, one might actually consider castling. Because that, uh, yeah, I mean, you're going to recover this one, and that uh, helps uh, the development, and uh, everything's fine. But here, actually, white has queen e2, and followed by rook d1, and he still uh, uh, enjoys the. Uh, and a, de a developmental advantage. So after bishop e7, it's uh, possible to play queen e2 and uh, probably critical to play d takes c5, forcing uh, black after d takes c5 to play queen takes d1, which is a slight concession. T rook e1 was played, and rook e1 is uh, just a bad move, in my opinion. Um, the rook really, it's kind of a waiting move in a sense, but you're white, you shouldn't be waiting around for black to do something. So it's kind of a waste of time, in my opinion. And uh, yes, you do give your bishop the square, but this won't be really relevant. Actually, it is relevant in the game, but it's because both sides sort of misplayed the position. So anyway, rook e1 was a slight error. Castles. Okay, this is of course uh, completely fine. And now b3. Now b3, again, I stated this uh, before, the bishop should go to d2. b3 is just bad because of knight a5. Well, not exactly because of knight a5, but we'll get to see why in a second. So uh, b3 allows knight a5 attacking this and if attacking the light squared bishop. And the light squared bishop is actually very important for uh, white at this position because it's the good bishop. These pawns are on dark squares. So this guy is the good bishop. It has some scope also on the king's side. Um, but, uh, but the problem here after knight a5 is that after you recapture the bishop, black, uh, white still has like the sort of nagging edge because the pawns would become very strong even though he lost the bishop pair. So the most accurate move was actually c takes d4. And why is c takes d4 a very important move? Well, because it opens up the c file. That's the primary reason. So let's consider what happens after e takes d4. Now after e takes d4, we have queen b6, preparing knight a5. And um, after queen b6, there's knight e4. We go to d5, and we have this kind of position. And this is about equal. Alright? And um, so b3 sort of uh, is... Uh, well, it's not exactly playing for equality, it's like uh, getting uh, white a slightly worse position even, it's not even equal. So this is one line. After e takes d4, queen b6, there's also d5. And here d5 actually doesn't work because of rook d8. So one might think that d5 is a very strong move. And it would be strong because after like takes, takes uh, and bishop takes, you have a very open position. 
but uh, rook d8 kind of shuts down everything after something like knight g5 note that the threat now is to capture even so um, after something like knight g5 you have uh, h6 and knight takes f7 at this position and now uh, yeah white is threatening to enter the position so this position is about uh, well it's slightly better for black I wouldn't say no it's not equal it's, it's slightly better for black and here uh, of course after uh, knight g5 we can't uh, really take here we can't really take here because of what exactly knight takes d5 of course so h6 knight takes f7 king takes f7 d takes e6 okay we just saw that rook d8 queen a5 is uh, is another option instead of a6 instead of h6 but it's not as good because of bishop d2 and uh, here uh, this position uh, is kind of uh, kind of equal and here of course d takes d6 we have this line and this line is also kind of equal here note that if you take the rook or something there's queen e7 and uh, so if you take the rook here there's queen e7 and you resign okay so instead of b3 so instead of knight a5 we have knight takes d4 after knight takes d4 bishop a3 uh, sorry after knight d4 now knight a5 is played and notice the difference to the game okay let's take this position and let's take this position what's the difference you have the open c file and that's very important so now in this position let's say bishop a3 you can take and take here and you're up the bishop pair this is like being up half a pawn and uh, after something like bishop d2 you have e5 queen c7 attacking this knight here and um, after let's say bishop d2 bishop e6 now you can safely take this pawn and you're much better or bishop b2 also there's bishop b6 and uh, here you're also much better after knight d2 rook d8 pinning the queen you can take actually and this fork nets you a pawn and you're again much better now after knight a5 bishop e2 e5 knight f3 queen c7 there is also queen c2 and here bishop e6 and knight d2 protecting this pawn now rook c8 lining up with this piece and queen b6 and the pawn can't be protected any longer note that rook a3 runs into bishop takes a3 so um this also wins so yeah c takes d4 was a very important move but uh, unfortunately Transu played uh, knight a5 and uh, knight a5 isn't as good but of course it uh, it's still okay for both sides now bishop f1 is a huge mistake bishop f1 it's kind of being scared of ghosts right so what the point i said earlier is that after bishop b2 taking here isn't so bad for uh, for white actually it's better why is it better because you you have to think concretely how do i win as black how are you going to win versus the center is the first question and you're not going to and second of all where is this bishop going to if it's going to any of these squares the knight will just hop to e5 and the worst case scenario black can just recover the bishop pair i'm sorry i mean white can just recover the bishop pair so what exactly is your way to get an advantage here as black there's just no way i'm sorry you're not going to get an advantage so that's why bishop f1 is kind of fearing ghosts i mean it makes sense rook, you play rook e1 and bishop f1 but concretely it doesn't make sense because of the reasons i stated so bishop f1 are just kind of fearing ghosts and now knight d5 wasn't the best move at all here you have many options you have b6 just developing the strong bishop you have queen c7 again lining up on this file h6 even you can uh, like waste time even in this position just to see what uh, white can white wants to do and probably c takes d4 e takes d4 is the best move and here 
again you have many options like b6 and queen c7 and uh, yeah white enjoys a pleasant edge here uh, black enjoys uh, an edge here but after knight d5 you're kind of helping white out why is that because he has the move knight takes d5 and now whichever way you recapture there are some problems so if e takes d5 and this position now bishop b2 is a huge move this bishop is so incredibly strong and not only that but white uh, black also has an isolated pawn so this position is much better for white and after queen takes d5 now something like bishop a3 of course note that knight takes b3 there is e4 and you lose the knight so bishop a3 b6 and something like this and uh, again this position b black has too many weaknesses on the queen side and uh, white is just better so after queen takes d5 the problem is that you really have nothing as white uh, and there's this concrete move bishop a3 which uh, also prepares to defend the pawn with rook b1 so that's very important and uh, it also does this by counter attacking so like let's say you go here you uh, yeah you take the knight uh, you take the pawn there's queen, there's e4 and if you take with the uh, with the queen let's say if you take the the pawn with the queen there's always uh, rook b1 or even queen takes queen takes and rook b1 so uh, so black is just uh, black is just well i wouldn't say toast but black uh, isn't doing uh, that well okay so queen c2 and this is again a wrong move so if we go back here now the blunders kind of start so b3 was wrong knight a5 was wrong bishop f1 was wrong knight d5 was wrong and now queen c2 of course was wrong because it missed the chance to go knight takes d5 and uh, of course i don't blame blame these players at all it's a very difficult position to play and there are a lot of nuances that's why I don't really recommend uh, Queen's uh, gambits to beginners or uh, intermediate players or even advanced players. Like, until you're uh, very strong in end games and uh, very much aware uh, of positional chess, like you're 2200 plus, I don't think you should be playing uh, d4 or uh, c4 or uh, responding in the, to the Queen's responding with the queen's gambit and stuff like that that's just my opinion anyway so queen c2 knight before is a very good move it attacks the queen and uh, yeah it sets up some kind of uh, ideas here so b6 again c takes d4 opening up the center was uh, prudent and here we can see this kind of position black is better here and after knight f3 also we have this position and uh, attacking this and black is also better and uh, e takes d4 it's just an isolated pawn that you can play around it maybe with queen c7 or something bishop here many options but uh, b6 was chosen and b6 isn't that wrong or anything but uh, i prefer c takes d4 after rook d1 lining up with the queen there was no necessity to play queen c7 in fact here in fact here bishop b7 bishop a3 and uh, this position is about equal note that bishop b7 d takes c5 you have queen c7 and uh, black uh, white can't take here because you have this uh, attack on the on the white knight so you just recover the pawn and you're happy so there was no strict need to queen c7 but again this requires seeing this tactic of the undefended knight so uh, that's not a huge deal to play queen c7 because the queen probably belongs here anyway and uh, bishop b2 ah, i don't really like this move because uh, you're kind of just inviting uh... oh sorry I, I don't like this move because it blunders a pawn <laughs> so uh, bishop b2 is uh... A huge mistake here you can just play knight a2 or uh, knight a2 you can see here or bishop a3 uh, just two moves that try to get rid of this very strong knight 
Um, I'm not sure why Bishop B2 was played. I looked at the chat here and uh, I didn't see anything. But yeah, Knight takes B3 and now the Rook has to move to A3. Only move. And now C4 is played. That C4 was a big blunder. Now, the reason why it's a big blunder is it may be a bit difficult to see. But in a game, you shouldn't be thinking in these terms. Like, I think uh, what Tranzu was thinking was that if I play c4, I keep my strong knight on b3, right? But what is this knight doing exactly? That's the real question. So you play c4, and also you open up for this bishop, of course. These are all valid reasons, but uh, I mean, tactics aside, c4 isn't really doing that much. Yes, it keeps the knight on b3, but I mean, what is this knight doing? Blocking these squares? Okay, that's fine. But um, that's not such a huge deal in this position. And uh, why is it not such a huge deal? Because you don't have to make use of the c file. You don't have to make use of the c file as white, well, not right now at least. So you can, uh, white can even play, like if you play c4, and there isn't this tactic, which you will see in a second, I... I hope you probably figured it out um, if you you can maybe like there's d5 at some point opening up the position uh, so you don't really have to make use of the c file and the knight can be dislodged anyway with these kind of moves so uh, or even an immediate knight d2 so yeah an, uh, even an immediate knight d2 puts uh, the question to uh, white's idea uh, black's idea so uh, c4 um, yeah, even on positional grounds, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But uh, tactically, it completely fails. So here, uh, after rook a3, just retreat with the knight. It's very simple. Also, you have the c4 square, and uh, life's good. But after rook a3 and c4, the tactical shot, bishop takes c4, and knight e5, wins a piece. Wins back the piece, and uh, this is just equal now. Uh, probably even better for uh, white, slightly. So, queen c7 here was played. Now, there was this amazing move of knight d2. And the point of this, of course, if you capture here, uh, black just captures here, and uh, he's better. So, uh, the point of this is that after rook takes d2, the queen returns to c7. Now, the rook is stuck on a3, not on b3. So, it's a very, very subtle point. So, here, after rook takes b3, we arrive at this position with rook on b3, but after knight d2, the desperado, we now get this position after rook takes d2 and queen c7, there's no rook on b3, so the rook is worse placed, it's in a worse position, it's not as uh, as good, So, but this, uh, this is a crazy computer tactic and... Uh, I wouldn't expect many humans to use these kind of tactics to get positional gains, so... Yeah, no fault there, Transu. Queen c7, very natural. Rook takes b3. Now, uh, bishop d6 was a bad idea based on bishop a3, because of bishop a3. And now, actually, white has a big advantage now. Um, instead of this, f6 just kicking away the knight and bishop b7, or even the immediate bishop b7 and maybe later f6, th those are, were all good moves. So, um... So we can see here actually, instead of bishop b2, white should have played these moves, which uh, put pressure on the strong knight. And in the same vein, here, black should have played this move to put uh, pressure, well here it actually doesn't put pressure, it just uh, shoes away the knight. So both sides were miss missing uh, getting rid of their opponent's strong knights. So yeah, don't do that. Don't let your opponent uh, keep a strong knight in the center of the board. Or, well, uh, the other one was on the edge, but it was a very strong knight. So, bishop d6. And the problem with bishop d6 is at some point runs to, into b5. So, bishop a3 is a very clever move, because if you play a5, now we have knight b5. So, bishop a3, the only way to kind of salvage the position is to take on e5. And after d takes e5, you have to play knight a5 anyway. And now f4, and uh, white is just better, maybe even winning. 
um, black uh, will soon lose the queen side and the white enjoys very strong pieces on the queen side. So bishop d7 and bishop a6 were alternatives after f4, but bishop b7 was played. Not a bad idea, and actually this bishop kind of won the game. So um, I couldn't fault this idea too much. Rook d2, okay, lining up, preparing some uh, queen b1s maybe, some rook uh, b2s. And uh, also, of course, uh, protecting the second rank from this idea. And here... Rook fd8 was played, but this was the wrong rook, and this is a very tough question to answer in chess, but, <laughs> yeah. So after rook fd8, knight b5, queen c6 was played, and this is the game continuation. But if rook d2, rook a d8 was played, now if knight b5 is played, you have the amazing shot, rook takes d2. And uh, now if the knight were to capture, you just take here. And this is basically a draw. Because after king f1 you can take here and you have these kind of checks and uh, this is uh, and the rook infiltrates also th so this is drawn. Now that was the best result for uh, white uh, for black. Now he's slightly worse or much worse even. So rook fd8, knight b5, queen c6 and here uh, white is much worse. Knight d5 was played of course a logical move it makes use of some tactics because like, uh, for example, e4 isn't possible, because we have knight takes f4, attacking this g2 point heavily. And this is actu this actually also happened in the game. Um, knight d6, there's also the possibility of queen takes e4. Note that knight takes b7 doesn't work, because of rook takes d2. And uh, bishop takes, bishop uh, a takes b4, and rook takes b4, queen a7, lining up with the king here. And rook takes b6, bishop d5, and now in this position, note that after e4 there's rook d b8, and uh, black is winning, because again of this, uh, this diagonal. Let me put the arrows like this. And after rook d2 here, um, the position should be better for uh, white, but black isn't completely lost, of course. But after knight d6... Knight d5 was played. Again, not a wrong move. Uh, well, so it sort of is. I mean, queen takes a4 uh, is by far better, but um, yeah, it can't be faulted too much. In a practical game, it's not that bad. And now the howler by uh, Colwam, knight takes b7. You have such a strong knight on this square. Why are you trading it for this bishop? Now, what happened in the game is that the bishop itself came on d6, but I mean, was there a reason to take this knight? Like, you could have played... Uh, well, knight c4 isn't possible here. Maybe even knight e4, let's say. And then you can bring the bishop to d6. But anyway, actually, the point of bringing the bishop to d6 uh, th doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Because what is it doing exactly on d6? It just looks fancy, but it has no targets at all. While the knight on uh, d6 has lots of targets. Has lots of juicy targets. So, 99% um, of the time, if you have the option of uh, keeping a knight on d6, or a bishop on d6, you go with the knight. And uh, you don't purposefully p p uh, remove uh, a piece, a uh, black's piece, on uh, b7 for that knight. So, um, so, yeah, that was a big mistake. Here, actually, uh, I kind of scrolled away too quickly there. Here actually, let's return to this position. Actually, rook c2, instead of the howler knight takes b7, rook c2. And uh, this position uh, is just basically winning for white. And we have f5 threats, and now this knight on this square kind of makes itself felt. Because now we have pressure on f7 also. So yeah, bad move by Colwam. And now rook a c8. Uh, here, instead of bishop d6, you could have still salvaged the position as white a bit, and kept an advantage with queen e4 or rook b d3. Well, uh, man, not even an advantage, it's almost equal now. But after bishop d6, this starts even becoming better for uh, black. Queen c6 was also possible attacking a4, 
and uh, note that these tactics don't work again because it might takes f4 and rook d4 rook a c8 this is a good position and if f5 rook a c8 again this is a good position queen takes a4 actually doesn't work here because of e4 the queen is protecting this guy and uh, something like this and uh, here uh, white uh, white is pushing through but uh, after uh, the game position rook a c8 not a bad move it may even transpose after rook d4 to queen c6 which we saw here this is the same position so this can transpose and um, after uh, bishop a3 also uh, this is also another good move for white and h3 knight c3 queen c6 and uh, queen a1 and now we have queen a1 queen c6 and now we have knight e4 on the cards so these were all uh, playable options for white rook c2 is another step in the wrong direction because it kind of relieves the pressure on black and now h6 wasn't necessary you can just go rook c8 and a later queen c6 h6 wasn't necessary at all i mean i get that you want to keep uh, i mean uh, keep the uh, keep the <laughs> keep the king safe but uh, it wasn't that uh, there wasn't anything on this uh, the square so on the back rank so the that wasn't the best but okay h6 queen e4 and now rook c8 queen e4 f5 okay this is an excellent move because it cements the knight on this square now e4 is no longer possible you can just take and it makes use of tactics of course if we take here we can just take back here and this is winning so um yeah f5 was a great move and queen c8 was also possible aiming to go for this check and uh, the queen is maybe even stronger than starting with the rook but okay the rook is also fine now queen d4 was played and uh, rook c2 was a bit of a strange move you had the option of bringing the rook to c2 with check so if you go rook c1 check king f2 now you can bring the rook to c2 with check so bringing the rook to c2 without a check, without a tempo is very strange, but maybe you missed the idea of going rook c1 then rook c2. It happens, but keep that in mind, Tranzu. You should uh, always be looking uh, out for uh, checks, capture strats, CCT. It's a very important concept. And here in this position, uh, black can safely resign, uh, white can safely resign. Any king move basically loses because of the g2 square and all lines the g2 square and here um, also the g2 square but anyway rook c2 was played and this is still completely winning for black and now even uh, white managed to blunder the pawn so he made uh, black's job easier and um, actually in this position he had the option of queen c8 and then check and queen c2 and this works tacti tactically because after rook b8 you have either knight e2 check, the immediate knight e2 check, or queen takes b8 and knight e2 check. But uh, still this worked out to perfection here. And uh, bishop f8 was a nice try at the end there because after king takes, queen d8 is made. But of course Transu didn't fall for that and he just pushed ahead with his attack. And uh, yeah, he's in a completely winning endgame. So a very nice game by Transu and uh, Colwem as well, but uh, there were some uh, nuances that were missed and uh, I don't uh, fault the players for that, it's only natural, but uh, maybe Colwem should consider switching away from D4, <laughs> at least that's my opinion. And um, yeah, it was a very nice game, very fun to analyze and I hope you got something out of it. We'll uh, talk now in the summary and the key concepts and the other parts of this video. Alright, so for the summary for uh, this video, well, uh, first of all, we have to, of course, go for options that don't block the light squared bishop and the queen, queen's gambit accepted. So, uh, e5, and uh, I wholeheartedly recommend e5, even though uh, theoretically white has some, uh, I mean practically white has some chances, but um, it's a very equalizing kind of line. I uh, I like it more than having in the dark, uh, light squared bishop with e6. But that's also pop possible. And of course, remember d takes e5 when you play the e6 position. 
can of course go for a6, I'm not saying don't go for it, but maybe e5 is a bit better, um, at least in practical sense, so uh, d takes c5, remember that move for uh, white, if you're playing the white side, and uh, the reason is because you don't want to fall back in development, you want to put the pressure on black, and uh, in this line of the queen's gambit accepted and accepted, and in most lines of the queen's gambit accepted, you should develop your bishop probably to d2 and not b2 because b3 is usually weakening because of knight a5 stuff and opening up the c file. And don't eat your own octopus, yeah, don't remove your own d6 knight to put in a, a d6 bishop or something like that. Just don't do it. Keep your knight and uh, maintain a strong uh, position for your octopus. So for the key concepts, I can't reiterate this enough for Colwem, please don't eat your own knight. Uh, this uh, sentence is a bit funny, but it's meant to be like that, to be memorable, so don't ever do that, please, Colwem. Uh, the knight on d6, you traded it for a very dumb bishop on b7. I mean, yeah, maybe it had potential on g2, but you were covering g2 with a d2 rook, so there was no problem there. And don't be afraid to lose the bishop pair to get a strong center, so uh, knight a5, while it does win the bishop pair, after uh, b takes c4, we saw that the white center with e3, d4 and c4 was very strong, and the black's bishop pair is of no use in that position, so uh, it needed to be prepared with d takes, that's why d takes, uh, c takes d4 was very important for black, and then knight a5 becomes much stronger, because uh, white doesn't have the strong center. Try to remove your opponent's strong knights, of course, or knight, uh, it goes without saying, f6 was very important, and when you're winning, keep it simple, this uh, point is for the, for the c4 move, so, just retreat the knight to a5, there was no need to play c4 to keep that knight on b3, where it maybe stops rook c1, but then again, rook c1 wasn't that much of a critical square, because the c file wasn't that important. So when you're up material, just keep it simple, and uh, well, you should be good to go, basically. So let's check out this game and see how we can apply the concepts we learned. It was played between uh, 2500 as black, and uh, 2200, almost 2300 as white. So, uh, we get the same opening we saw, by transposition, and uh, here rook e1 is played, which is a slight inaccuracy, and let's see how black punishes that, Though we, as you can see by uh, the engine graph down here, it uh, wasn't such a great job, <laughs> uh, black didn't do such a great job at punishing white, but still it was more than enough, here again, don't forget about this, and now finally it's played, knight a5, maybe bishop b7 here was better, mm. yeah knight a5 should be fine though, maybe even knight b4 was an option, bishop b7, and maybe black could have delayed capturing this guy, maybe rook c8 first, but okay he took, and uh, here a bit of repetition went on, but black, of course, doesn't want to draw against the 2300, because he's a 2500. <laughs> and the queen c7, optimal place for the queen. Rook d8, attacking this weak pawn. So we have these hanging pawns, and uh, white has, uh, black has the bishop pair, so this should be a good position. But uh, surprisingly, black, uh, white has some counterplay. Here, bishop a3 should have been played, as we saw in the game, actually. So, if you studied uh, our game well, you would have known that bishop a3 is always a critical move in this variation of the queen's gambit accepted. So, knight b1 was a very pass passive move, and here black just got a huge uh, edge. And uh, white was left with many weaknesses, and black was able to exploit that. And actually here we see a kind of similar uh, endgame to the one we saw in the Transu game. Transu Colwem game, our main game, and uh, black just uh, gets a passed pawn and he's up actually three pawns here, so uh, white resigned. So uh, how can we apply what we learned from that game, this game? Well, first of all, uh, remember the bishop a3 idea, of course, here if we... Sorry, there was a struck there, so if we go... 
at this point. Bishop a3 is a very critical move to trade off the strong uh, dark squared bishop. And of course our dark squared bishop here isn't doing anything. And um, we can also learn that b3 is a bad move. You should just develop with bishop d2. So that was another point. So this 2300 uh, should have checked out the Transu Coleman game, right? <laughs> and uh, here we also learned that we should uh, capture always on d4. So even up, since h3 we should have captured on h4 on d4. Oops, my bad there. And uh, of course, uh, black should make use of knight a5 and bishop b7. So uh, yeah. So uh, that's it for this section. So we got to see how we could use what we learned in uh, novel positions and other uh, other similar uh, positions. So for our fun fact for this video, actually the opening trap we saw with b5, it was analyzed by Alessandro Salvio in 1604 and uh, he was basically the, the unofficial world champion in the 1600s, a very strong player back then. And it's amazing that he actually analyzed the line and the Queen's Gambit accepted almost 400 years ago. That's uh, pretty insane. And uh, now for the future considerations. So here we're going to have some open-ended questions. And, uh, and some uh, maybe more concrete questions. Well, which have you found easier to play, E5 or E6? The opening, I want to hear the opinion of people... Uh, who have played the Queen's Gambit accepted, Who, which uh, line do you prefer? And uh, can you think of a position where uh, the dark square bishop on, is on b2 and the Queen's Gambit accepted, not on d2, as uh, I stated? It's usually on b2, on d2, but when can it be a good idea to put it on b2? And what do you think is the theoretical verdict concerning the Queen's Gambit accepted? Is it, uh, does it fully equalize for black, or... Um, uh, does white have a way to somehow win? Is it not that uh, good for black? Uh, maybe Alpha Zero will help us with this uh, question. Okay, thanks for uh, now.